morning. I'm Andrew Whaley. I'm coming to you today from Highland Park, one of our oldest parks here in Roanoke. I love this park, the brick sidewalks that wind their way through the baseball fields and football field, the basketball courts and the playground. I think it will become clear to you as we go through this morning's message why I chose this place to film. I want to start, though, today by reading you the 19th Psalm. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. Day to day pours forth speech, and night to night declares knowledge. There is no speech, nor are there words. Their voice is not heard. Yet their voice goes out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In the heavens he has set a tent for the sun, which comes out like a bridegroom from its wedding canopy, and like a strong man runs its course with joy. Its rising is from the end of the heavens and its circuit to the end of them, and nothing is hid from its heat. The law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. The decrees of the Lord are sure, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The ordinances of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, even much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and drippings of the honeycomb. Moreover, by them is your servant warned. In keeping them, there is great reward. But who can detect their errors? Clear me from hidden faults. Keep back your servant also from the insolent. Do not let them have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. One of the revelations I've experienced in this last week has been that we aren't going to be going back to normal for a very long time. I try to avoid being a doomsday predictor, but I also don't want to be a Pollyanna who denies the reality around me. And it appears that the life of our congregation is not going to resume anything that looks akin to what life looked like in early March of 2020 until there is some kind of reliable treatment, most likely a vaccine, for COVID-19. It could be as early as 2021, could be significantly longer. So do we just pare down the witness of the church? Some congregations are doing that. Just put everything on life support, make it manageable. Because it's really hard to think about children and youth formation and adult education, mission activities, worship, care for the suffering, baptisms, weddings, life milestones placed on a respirator until we're free to breathe again. Or we can reinvent. I'm reminded of a study project I did in college. It was a comparison paper of the preaching of Scottish Presbyterian pastors in the years leading up to the mass migration of Scottish people to the United States, who ultimately ended up in Appalachia. My question was, were there elements from the preaching of those 17th century Scottish preachers that were still evident in the preachers of those mountains in Appalachia today? There was a book I found in the New College Library at the University of Edinburgh, written by a guy named William Blakey that out outlined what was going on in the Church of Scotland in the 17th century. It starts with the restoration of the British monarchy in 1662, which made it illegal to be a Presbyterian minister in Scotland. The Church of England was going to be reinstituted. And so it became illegal to harbor a preacher and it became illegal to preach as a Scottish Presbyterian preacher. And so a new form of preaching was developed as an innovation from this season of persecution. It resulted in what has now come to be called field preaching. This was a form of 
preaching that didn't depend on the pastor having his study or his library, access to his books, using accurate language, studying the Hebrew and the Greek of the biblical text. Blakey writes, it was the preaching that seizes as with the grip of a drowning man what is most vital and precious and reassuring in the whole sphere of religious truth. He cites that it was a kind of preaching that focused principally on the free grace of Jesus Christ and the personal union that we needed to have with him in order for transformation to take place. Blake, he says that the pulpiteers echoed Christ's word, ye must be born again as the germ of that great transformation by which men are fitted for heaven. And so out of this experience, this experience of field preaching, there became this contact of the preacher to the mind and the soul of his audience. He speaks in their common language, dramatizes the scene that he describes, asks questions that stir their consciences to grow closer to Christ. Now, if that sounds familiar to you, this kind of outdoor preaching at the core of the gospel that unites the heart, mind, and soul of the person to the transforming grace of Jesus Christ, you know that this sounds a lot like a revival. This is the precursor to revivalism that ultimately comes into America in what we now call the First Great Awakening. It was this time of persecution and this time of adaptation that created this whole new form of gospel proclamation that ended up awakening all kinds of hearts and minds to the free love of God in Jesus Christ. So here I stand in a field, preaching. Could we learn still from our ancestors? We are in the midst of COVID-19. Here's what we know about how it spreads. It spreads mostly by breath, these droplets in our breath. We've seen in the research that it spreads much less significantly when we gather outside. So my challenge to us as a congregation is how could we spend this season as the church outdoors? I know that Lee Sackett and her team are already working on a God Alive plan that will involve our elementary schoolers in outdoor activities this fall. Would there might there be a chance for cookouts together as a congregation? Outdoor celebrations of the Eucharist on Wednesday mornings. Instead of fellowship events to hockey games or Wednesday night dinners or indoor talent shows, could we go on hikes? Could there be family camping trips? Since we can't go visit homebound people at their houses indoors right now, could we start delivering flowers and leaving them with a note on the porch or offering a song outside of someone's window? You see, our Scottish ancestors knew what the psalmist declares, that the heavens are telling the glory of God and the firmament proclaims his handiwork. So my invitation to you is that let's prepare to continue that tradition. A tradition that's also an innovation. It might just spark a revival.